Hello, today in this video, we are going to see how to handle an emergency descent situation due to depressurization in an Airbus A320. Talking about emergency descent, it may be required because of a need to descend to a lower altitude quickly due to a pressurization failure, fire or smoke etc. A depressurization in a large transport aircraft usually occurs, rapidly or, gradually. A rapid decompression is where the depressurization occurs in a matter of seconds with excessive cabin vertical speed. It is normally associated with a bang and sudden misting of the cabin air. Although it may not result in damage to the lungs, but crew incapacitation is a concern due to onset of hypoxia. In this, the time of useful consciousness is left, so quick donning of oxygen mask is absolutely essential. Decompression sickness may also be witnessed due to high altitude decompression. Whereas, a gradual decompression is a slow loss of cabin pressure which occurs over a long period of time. It is difficult to identify before cabin altitude sensors gives a warning. This occurred due to a small leak in the pressurized sections of fuselage, a malfunction in the outflow valve or a reduction in the cabin air inflow due to equipment malfunction. Now, let us look into the procedure to handle emergency descent in an Airbus A320. Let's begin. You are on a routine flight cruising at flight level 350 flying the last leg of the day. You observe on the cruise SD page that cabin rate of climb is on a rise with cabin altitude increasing. These values suddenly becomes excessive and cabin altitude starts to pulsate. Excessive cabin altitude and high cabin rate of climb confirms the need of immediate actions. Pressurization failure in case of rapid decompression causes ear popping, misty ear and increased noise levels. The emergency descent should only be initiated upon positive confirmation that cabin altitude and rate of climb is excessive and uncontrollable. Cabin pressure excess cabin altitude alert triggers when in cruise, the cabin altitude is above 9550 and, in climb or descent, when cabin altitude is above the higher of 9550, or 1000 feet above the airfield pressure altitude. The cabin pressure excess cabin altitude warning must be considered as a confirmation that the cabin altitude is excessive, even if not confirmed on the cabin pressure SD page. The cabin pressure excess cabin altitude warning can be triggered by a cabin pressure sensor, different from the one used to control the pressure and display the cabin altitude on the SD. Actions of emergency descent are performed in two steps. First step is to apply memory items. Second step is to perform read and do procedures given by ECAM or in QRH. The flight crew must perform memory actions immediately announcing, emergency descent. Both cockpit crew dons the oxygen mask to prevent onset of hypoxia. This is followed by putting on the headsets to establish communication through intercom. This is done by switching the int rad switch to int and pressing the intercom reception knob and turning volume to high. Speaker volume is set to high and readability is confirmed. On FCU panel pilot flying turns the altitude knob and pulls to descent immediately. Moving left in the sequence, he turns the heading knob and pulls to steer the aircraft away from the ATS route. Further left, the speed knob is pulled to select the current speed. To initiate emergency descent, the use of autopilot and auto thrust is highly recommended. Meanwhile pilot monitoring puts on the seat belts and no smoking or no PED signs located at the overhead signs panel. If the cabin altitude goes above 14,000 feet, the pilot monitoring must press the mask man on push button on the overhead panel. When it is obvious that the cabin altitude will exceed 14,000 feet, pilot monitoring could press mask man on push button before the cabin altitude reaches 14,000 feet. Pilot flying read the FMA to confirm changes he had made and the aircraft is established on descent. Pilot monitoring focuses on monitoring the FMA to ensure that the pilot flying had correctly established the aircraft in descent. In case the auto thrust is not active, pilot flying brings back the thrust lever to ideal. Pilot flying then pulls the speed brakes to full for maximizing rate of descent by increasing drag. 
At high levels, the flight crew should extend the speed brakes while monitoring the VLS. This is in order to avoid the activation of the angle of attack protection which may result in retraction of speed brakes and autopilot disconnection. When in ideal thrust, high speed and speed brakes extended, the rate of descent is approximately 7,000 feet per minute. To descend from flight level 390 to flight level 100, it takes approximately 4 minutes and 40 nautical miles. Fly. Navigate. Communicate. Keeping in mind the Airbus first golden rule, the pilot's memory actions had flown the aircraft correctly into an immediate descent with correct speed and configuration, and navigated the aircraft away from the ATS route. Now he has to communicate to make other stakeholders aware about the situation. Pilot flying asks for ECAM actions and the pilot monitoring starts to perform ECAM. Pilots establishes communication with ATC calling, Mayday Mayday Mayday, with aircraft call sign and mentioning, emergency descent. On the PA, pilot flying announces. Emergency descent. To apprise the cabin crew and passengers about the situation. While pilot monitoring carries out the ECAM actions, pilot flying adjusts and fine-tunes the settings on the FCU panel. Starting from the altitude, he selects flight level 100 or MORA which is displayed on ND. This is the highest MORA value within a radius of 40 nautical miles around the aircraft. Then he adjusts the heading to keep away from other traffic on ATS routes, keeping in mind nearest suitable aerodromes, terrain, and restricted, prohibited or danger areas. Finally the speed is kept pulled in case pilots suspect structural damage to avoid further damage at high speeds. This can be confirmed if the pilots hear a loud bang. If structural damage is suspected pilot should maneuver with care. In case of no damage to the aircraft pilot selects maximum speed which is VMO or MMO. As part of the ECAM actions, pilot monitoring sets squawk code to 7700 if not radar identified. If TCAS RA is encountered, pilot flying should give it a priority and perform maneuver, even if it requires temporary interruption of descent. When about to capture flight level of 100, MEAOR MORA, pilot flying retracts the speed brakes and manages the speed target. Now the pilot monitoring removes the oxygen mask and confirms that it's breathable normally and then the pilot flying follows. This will be the right time to check for the condition in the cabin. Pilot flying makes a public address, instructs cabin crew to perform post-decompression actions and asks for condition in the cabin. Below flight level 100, the flight crew should limit the rate of descent to approximately 1,000 feet per minute, except during approach phase. This reduces the possibility of ear and nose bleeding. Let us now quickly summarize handling of the overall procedure. As soon as the situation arises, demanding an emergency descent, pilots apply the first step. The first step include memory actions as discussed previously. Once the memory actions in the first step is complete, pilots apply the second step. The second step includes read and do procedure as requested by the ECAM or with the help of the emergency descent checklist given in the QRH. This brings us to the end of the overall handling of emergency descent in an Airbus A320. Thank you for watching.